It's always mildly disturbing when a Muslim tries to correct me about violence in Islam, but still ends up promoting violence. In a recent video, I shared multiple hadiths where Muhammad commanded his followers to kill apostates. Dawah for Christian didn't want me to think that Muhammad commanded his followers to kill apostates, so he replied, Kill them means those who do false teaching. Wow, so peaceful. I answered, So you're saying that anyone who teaches something false should be killed? Great job defending Muhammad. Not surprisingly, Dawah for Christian then changed the subject, standard Dawah procedure. Where in Bible Jesus says, one, I love unbelievers, two, I love unbelievers who was sinners, three, I love unbelievers who are my enemy, please any verse. But then he continues explaining who has to be killed, according to Muhammad. To be killed is munafik, a hypocrite, or false Islamic preacher, but actually they are fooling Muslims. So, false teachers have to be executed, according to Dawah for Christian. I'm not sure how this changes the fact that Muhammad said if anyone leaves his Islamic religion, kill him, but we'll let that slide for now, because our Muslim friend asked about the love of Jesus. And I will answer. Let's read a few verses from Matthew 5, Dawah for Christian. Matthew 5, verses 43 to 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, Love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his sun to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore you are to be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Notice, Dawah for Christian, Jesus commands his followers to love our enemies, even those who persecute us, so that we can be like God in this sense. God has shown love even towards our enemies, we should too. Notice also that Jesus looks down upon the sort of love that says, Love me first and I'll love you back. If you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. Tax collectors were among the people most despised by the Jews. They were viewed as traitors because they collected taxes from their own people to give to the Romans, and they would collect a little extra for themselves. Jesus says that even tax collectors love people who love them. Why is this important for you to know, Dawah for Christian? Well, what kind of love does Allah have? In Surah 3, verses 31 to 32, Allah tells Muhammad to say, If you love Allah, then follow me. Allah will love you and forgive you your faults, and Allah is forgiving, merciful. Say, Obey Allah and the Apostle, but if they turn back, then surely Allah does not love the unbelievers. So, if you love Allah, then follow Muhammad, and Allah will love you. But if you don't, then Allah will not love you. In other words, if you love Allah first, and you obey him, then Allah will decide to love you back. But this is the kind of love that, according to Jesus, is no better than the love of a random tax collector. What this means is that, according to Jesus, the God of the Bible is greater than the God of the Quran. According to Jesus, the God of the Bible is perfect in love. The God of the Quran is limited in love and therefore defective. You follow a defective God, Dawah for Christian, and that's why you're so quick to call for the violent deaths of false teachers. But as long as you're preaching a violent, defective, limited God, you have no business doing Dawah for anyone, let alone for Christians. Turn to the true God, Dawah for Christian, and learn to love your enemies so that you can be a son of your Father in Heaven.